I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just short as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So before we start... Um, okay. Yeah, I just want to bring up that uh, I got sick from my daughter again because of daycare. So if I sound any different or cough a little extra on this one, uh, there there you go. I'll, I'm, I'm going to turn away from the mic, but... I'm not gonna edit it out because that's a, that's that's a lot of that's just time. Uh, are you gonna turn away from the mic to breathe though? Yeah. Oh, am I breathing like that? No, I'm. I, it was I, a chocolate I, rain. It was a chocolate rain joke. Oh, I well, didn't know if yeah. I was like extra nasally or sniffly. No, no, <laughs> I was making a I was making a chocolate rain joke. So it I wasn't wanted anything more than that. Discuss. We're, we're recording a little bit later because I had to go into work. Um, yeah. This morning. I mean. Realistically, we're not recording all that later because I'm usually late to recording. Yeah, fair. But I I moved to like a corner office with the window because woo woo, and um, moving on up, moving on up. The security the guard side. when I when I came in was the oldest, frailest man I've ever seen as a security guard. And um, hmm. so I go in, I move my I move into my new spot, and uh, a few hours later, I'm leaving. And as I'm leaving, I hear him on the phone. And he, he says, um, to presumably someone in IT or, like, a younger relative of his, uh, uh-huh. I was on the internet. It won't go away. It says, if you like what you see, pay here. <laughs> <laughs> so, th- so this guy was, was uh, he, he was, he was cranking it. He was cranking it while I was moving my office. Way to, into it. way to go, old man. Way to go. He was cranking that shit. He was cranking that soldier boy, for sure. Oh, God, there's a new season of, of The Boys, and that's very, very relevant. I'm on episode three. Did you finish it? Th- I, I, I finished um, season three, episode two. Okay. Did you see yeah. season, episode one yet? I saw episode one, two, and three. And that's why it I said Soldier Boy sure relevant. opens strong, doesn't it? What was the opening? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. The uh, cricket. Cricket man. Termite. Termite, yes. His name was Termite. His name was Termite. And, uh, yeah, that man's that man will never be the same. Well, not Termite. Termite. Well, he'll probably never be the same either, for that matter. Yeah. So that's, you, don't do, you don't do what Termite did and come out from that as a, as a person who's ever going to be the same. No. No. That was very interesting. Yeah, so uh, uh, here's our, our show recommendation list for this episode. The Boys on Amazon. Shorzy mm-hmm. on Letterkenny. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, Shorzy on Hulu. Uh, Letterkenny spinoff. Uh, I say it's better than Letterkenny. Oh, there was something I recently watched that was terrible. But I loved it. I, know, I started watching The Floor is Lava season two this morning. Yeah. So good. How's that going for you? So oh, okay. good. I like dumb shows like that. I like Floor's Lava. I like The Circle. Circle. The Circle had uh, not a twist ending, but I was I was slightly surprised. I think I saw. I think I think I anticipated. Well, I, not anticipated, but uh, was rooting for that individual. Yeah. the the winner The winner was on my list of people who I would want to win my top yeah. two, but uh, the ending with um, probably the single worst catfish that's ever existed. Actually, two of the single worst catfish that have ever existed was interesting. Yeah. Funny story. Funny story. Uh, if that person was actually correct in saying that they're from the town that the uh, Sopranos house is in, my girlfriend lives in that town. Nice. It's North Cad- uh, Cadwall? North Cadwall? Whatever. I don't know. Yeah. So she would be I like, oh, there. that's uh, such and so from the place. Oh, no. That... That wasn't, that was, it was more of like, oh God, is that person actually in the same town as me? Yeah. Oh, geez. Um, cause like, cause like for me, I don't remember town names. I just remember how to drive places. I actually have, 
So here's the like weirdest thing about me, and like I think you can attest to this because you yeah. you've 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 driven shotgun to me on many occasion. I have very 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 good sense of direction. Yeah, yeah, I I, I, but, I agree. But if you ask me to explain where anything is, I'm just like I don't know, but I can get there. <laughs> that <clears throat> when I worked at the farm uh, place. Mm -hmm. the 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 guy that owned it was the worst directions giver ever because he'd be like oh go until you see cows and turn left or whatever <laughs> and he'd be like where is that he'd just be like i don't where and then one time he literally drew on the hood of the box truck because i had to do a delivery on the dirt on the hood like roads and he wrote like the word cows in a spot and then just wrote like big tree and all that. it's like what? How do I? How am I supposed? And then I have to just go find somebody else who knows road names that can explain to me where I'm going. So could you could you de de uh, decode this for me? Uh oh, just a little bit. No, I'm just I was just saying. Oh, hey, oh did I go? Did I go dead? There's no no. Anywho, no. um, did you see uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers though? I saw the the important part with uh, Sonic in the beginning bad sonic you should watch the whole thing it's really funny because you also haven't have you seen the have you seen all the parts with sonic no so i watched part of that during a um memorial day weekend i went to mm -hmm. um my my in-laws place <clears throat> and when it got warm outside i just went inside with the baby and like had her sitting on my lap and, and my nephew put on chip and dale rescue rangers Ch -ch -ch chip and dale Rescue Rangers. No. Something danger. No. Na, 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 it was a cool like mix how, how they did the different like two D and three D animations in the. Uh... I well, they weren't actually two D and three D. They were just different shaders. Yeah, that's the secret, Cap. Well, nothing's really like animated two D anymore. It's all just three D. That's not entirely true. There's a few things that are still animated. There's but a few. They're not. They're not using cell animation typically, but that's yeah. a whole other thing. So but like I, we're we're you're we're splitting hairs here about what 2D animation is. Yeah, I just don't like watching anime where it's clearly like 3D models. That like so turns me off. That sometimes that's true for me, but sometimes it works. Like I, I even sometimes. had a hard time with the new season of Shield Hero with the. Uh, big turtle thing because the big turtle thing was clearly a model yeah i mean but that's actually something you can kind of like rationalize yeah. because like, it's supposed like, to be that's that that's my limit of like how much i can take is the the turtle from the new season of uh shield hero gotcha, gotcha. that's my threshold um that's your godzilla threshold that's my godzilla threshold yeah and by that i mean godzilla in 1998 that does not hold up, by the way. Let me look that up. Is that Godzilla 2000? No, <laughs> Godzilla 2000 is a totally different movie. Let's see. Let's take a look at this stuff. Godzilla 1998 is the Matthew Broderick film that has the iguana. Oh, Godzilla, which, that one. So here's the problem. Matthew here's Broderick the problem. killed two people in Ireland? Well, that's one thing. That's one of the problems. Uh, although I think I have more of a so Matt Matthew Broderick uh, it was a car accident right he drunk he drove drunk, into two he people drunk drove yeah um, I have more of a of a problem with Mark Wahlberg who did a racism he and did do a racism I think he killed somebody I can't remember he did something really bad to somebody anywho let's not let's not talk about let's not talk about this um, but well, what the I was last gonna thing say we need is a defamation suit. Which I don't even I don't want to talk about that either because there's a lot of really negative connotations that come out of that suit, um, in terms of like how people view abuse and such, like really big problem. Yep. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna have some consequences and like going to in, it's going to suppress people's ability to uh, to call people out when they're you know being abusive shits. But that's a whole other thing. Um, we're not going to go into that. Uh, but the 1998 Godzilla movie is actually not 
terrible. And I That's say the that one where they, they're in like Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Those, I, so I say I didn't that like that when I watched it. I liked it when I watched it. I actually loved it when I watched it. That's I, I um, usually like the Godzilla movies. That was one of the ones where like during the watching it without looking back, like at the in the moment, I was like, this isn't super great. Well, it's not a Godzilla movie. That's the thing. Then don't why is it called Godzilla? It Godzilla? Well, they fucked up, but don't consider it Godzilla. If you don't consider the movie Godzilla, um, and you consider it Zilla, and it's a separate kaiju movie, then it's good. If you is consider that it as a Godzilla movie, what we do to movie, all the bad Godzilla movies is we just call them Zilla, and like make no, them their own no. Thing? This is a this is a very specific case of Zilla. Zilla is the is the iguana from Godzilla nineteen ninety eight. Okay. Um, and that one, I give that movie a pass because it does something different, but it's not a Godzilla movie. It's closer to a Gorgo movie than it is to a Godzilla movie. Yeah, it honest. did have some unique things that, if it was done it, to any other franchise, would, well, would be like a novel change. Well, like, if you divorce it from the Godzilla franchise and pretend yeah. and you don't think of it as a Godzilla movie, which... Frankly, it's not made like a Godzilla movie. It's not shot like a Godzilla movie. The storylines are not Godzilla movie like. There's like nothing other than the name to tie it to Godzilla. It becomes better. But well, and um, the giant lizard creature. I mean, the Zilla design's fucking great, actually. It's a it's a mutant it's giant. Fast. It's 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 a leaner, faster iguana. looking Godzilla. Yeah. It's a really cool design. And I will defend that design till the day I die, but it's not Godzilla. Okay. It's Zilla. And that's okay. I'm okay with it being Zilla. I'm okay with being a separate entity from Godzilla. It's just not Godzilla. Um, but anywho, I digress. Uh, so, I did a dumb thing with our money this week. Go on. Um, and I bought a spirit box. Nice. For- 90 something dollars or so, right? Yeah. Um 98 something like that, which yeah. is way too much and for what you, it is. You put a lot of really good pictures of the breakdown in the Discord channel. Yeah, um I unfortunately couldn't break it down more without damaging it, without destroying it because the way that they assembled it was just like it was impossible to take the main board out without uh damaging a connection. Yeah, and they had one of those chips with 28 or whatever, you know, just a lot of pins where they're impossible to remove without bending at least one of them. Yeah. So I didn't want to, like, risk damaging it because I still want to fuck around with it more. Yeah, If I ever fair. get to the point where I don't want to fuck around with well, if we ever get to the point where we don't want to fuck around with it more, I'll, I'll look at the back of the PCB. But, like, also I don't think there's going to be that much on the back of the PCB that's interesting. It's probably just going to be solder points. <clears throat> no, with how it's mounted, it's probably just solder points and yeah. maybe like sur- some surface mount stuff. Yeah, I like a capacitor or two at most. I don't think it's anything. I don't think it's anything serious. Um, but it turns out that it's just a fucking radio with a custom C- PCB. So, yeah, not ninety dollars for a custom radio. Pretty much. Yeah, man. Like a handheld with actually a terrible speaker. Like, in comparison to other radio speakers, it's bad. It's a bad radio speaker with a bad temperature reader, with a bad light. It's just a... It's basically a piece of shit for $98. Yeah. Like, a, like a, a Walmart radio and digital meat thermometer would be cheaper and better? Yeah, because at least with a digital meat thermometer, you'd be able to tell what temperature it was. Yeah. And you can sound um, with it. Oh, Brandon. I'm so we were talking about the boys and uh, you know. Yeah, that's super relevant. Yeah, super relevant. Season 3. Super Check relevant. it out. It's it has uh the second episode has one of the darkest things that's ever happened on the show in my opinion. What's I just watched that. What's the dark thing in that? Uh it's it's Homelander's birthday and he finds something out that makes him upset. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. he does something that is probably I mean, he's done a lot of bad stuff, but it might be the worst thing he's like, done. You have to be very specific with the boys and say, like, oh, it had something dark in it, because it's just all yes. super dark. Um, 
I will say that there's like I, I definitely look at like a trigger list for the boys because if it exists, you if you have a trigger, it's in there. It's probably in there. And if you don't, you'll probably find a couple new ones at least. Yeah. Um. But anywho, so I was talking about the spirit box because it's related to this week's episode. Nice. Um. Not because it was used in any conjun- in conjunction with this week's. Actually, no, that's not true. The um, the BuzzFeed Unsolved people used it near near the thing we're talking about. Um, but this week, I'm going to be talking about another haunted doll. Um, and that haunted doll, Brandon, is yes. one of the most infamous. I think it's arguably the most well-known do- haunted doll, would you say? I, I would agree. It's definitely the most well-known haunt spooky doll. Well, yeah, no, no, no. so... Except... Like it's in contending with Chucky. Like it's that okay that far up there. Yeah, I mean, I'd say it's the most well known extant haunt a, haunted doll that has a physical presence in the world, and pe- some people believe it exists. Yeah. I don't think people believe Chucky exists. No, I don't think anyone thinks Chucky's real. Yeah. Um. But anywho, so we're gonna continue talking about haunted dolls. Jennifer Aniston's um, first movie, by the way. No, sorry, that's Leprechaun. Is that Jennifer Aniston's? I thought Leprechaun that was someone. Is, I got that mixed. I got them mixed up. Is My is bad. it Leprechaun? I I feel like. Wait one sec. I think the first Leprechaun movie is at Jennifer Aniston's first uh, appearance in in film. Oh, I found out where to get weed gummies. Oh, you can. There's just, nothing else to say that you can get to store I, them just, online. Yeah, no, I found. I I figured out where to get them. I I found uh, the uh, when I was filling up or getting food at a gas station. They were like, we have them. And I'm like, we live oh, in a weird time. I know what gas station you're at then. Do you? Was it New Paltz? No. Oh, shit. Never mind. Were it you was like, on, in it your was neck on, of the woods? Yeah, it was on 9... Well, New Paltz is my neck of the woods. It was on uh, It was on 9W. Uh, oh. Heading towards Newburgh. It's the, one of the chipmunk markets. Um, oh, all right. Yeah. So, anywho... Um, this is probably the most infamous haunted doll of all time. It's Annabelle. Um, for who, those who don't know, it's a doll that was contained, in quotes, by the demon ghost hunting team of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Woo, two of know, my favorite human beings. Are you just are you, are you, are you going to start like the Ed and Lorraine Warren rabbit hole? Like uh, something they, they did for like the next coming few episodes? Who knows? I mean, <clears throat> I was going to do could. more depth on them, but like... There's a lot to them, and I didn't have a lot of time to work on this episode, so I just delved into the the Annabelle story exclusively. Yeah. Um, so like, 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 there's a whole thing you can say about them because like the Book of Shadows thing, like the 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 D and D Book of Shadows and the Warrens, right? You've heard of that story, right? Yeah, <clears throat> I've heard a few things um, about them. They they do they they do a lot of uh, shitty uh, shitty shits. They're really terrible, actually. But that's a whole other thing. We yeah. we'll we'll talk about that a little bit in a sec. But we'll we'll talk about it more in the future. Um, but if you don't know who they are, they were a husband and wife team that operated out of the Northeast, investigating paranormal phenomena. Um, with some of their most notable cases, including the Enfield Poltergeist, which is some bullshit, the Smurl Haunting, which is some bullshit. The Perrin Family, which was the inspiration for The Conjuring, which is some bullshit. Uh, Arn Johnson, which was some satanic panic bullshit. And, of course, the absolutely and totally not made up Amityville Horror. Well, they've got themselves a a track record for sure. Yeah, I mean, Amityville Horror definitely, definitely happened the exact way they said it did. And it wasn't at all a cover for uh, domestic abuse. But whatever. But that's, um, a st- that's a story for another episode. Mm-hmm. So, uh, much like Robert, her provenance is dubious, and her actual impact is really minimal, to be honest. Um, I was going to say that her her lore wasn't that interesting, but actually, her backstory is kind of a fun ghost story. So, we're going to be... Oh, cool. We're going right. to be going over the ghost story. I dig um, it. But uh, the human surrounding her and the lore emerging is creates a larger than life figure uh, that the floppy frame of her namesake cannot shoulder, and we'll get into why it's a floppy frame. So, uh, as I mentioned before, was her namesake uh, prob- one of those kids that smoked weed in a commercial? <laughs> the like, like, 
flattened out ones that were like yeah. really they look terrible. Like an egg cooked on a couch. The terrible. Like, what was? Who was thinking that that was a good idea? If you smoke weed, it'll make your bones dissolve. I mean, that might be useful in certain situations. Maybe, but only if you could undissolve them. Yeah, it works for it works for Rimuru Tempest, so it'll work for me. Okay. Um, so the storytelling for this, like the provenance of of Annabelle's pure story, cre- crafted by Ed and Lorraine Warren, I don't think that there's any evidence whatsoever to substantiate any of these claims. Um, at least none that I could find. So just just assume that everything I'm about to say is a crock of shit. But this is the story that they tell. Um, I do want to go into their life in more depth because there's a lot of weird shit there. Like, they had an assistant that I'm pretty sure was just, like, like uh, Ed's mistress oh. that, like, just traveled with them. It's yeah. a, There's a whole lot of shit there. Like, in a, um, in, a, in a fashion that Lorraine was aware of and just cool with her, like, she, was, she didn't know he was, like, tongue punctioning her, her fart box or... I might have been aware. I don't know. Okay. This is this is this is getting into territory where I'd have to look it up. But it's I definitely remember him having a mistress with a weird relationship, and yeah. Okay. Um, but anywho, so we're gonna be adapting the account of Annabelle's like history from the Warrens' own Nesper, which is the New England Society for Psychic Research, which is such a a. They had a chance to call it psychical research, and then it would be more like Ghostbusters, but yeah. they didn't take it. Um, although Ghostbusters came after, though, so whatever. Um, so our story, Brandon, it begins in 1970. Woo! So, you know, we got a lot of lead gasoline going on. A lot of lead gasoline. You know. Frank Zappa's running around doing yeah, lots of cool stuff. Like um, LSD is still, like, easily acceptable, if my memory is correct. Oh, you can still get it. Like, super easily acceptable, though. Like, in the 70s, it was really easy to get, because what's his face? <clears throat> well, they made it, and then they were just like, you just be dosed and not know it. Yeah, that was like, that was like, I mean, the CIA is basically res- responsible for counterculture. Yeah. For, in no uncertain terms. For for just dosing communities, just to see yep. what would happen. Mm-hmm. Um... So, anywho, uh, the mother of a soon-to-graduate nursing student purchased a Raggedy Ann doll from a local hobby store. Um, and you heard that right. The haunted doll that holds, holds down its own media franchise, clocking in at three movies, uh, is originally what I would call one of the single least frightening and intimidating dolls in human history. Yeah, they're adorable. Like, a Raggedy Ann doll, like, if a Raggedy Ann doll came at me, I wouldn't be s- scared. Like, even if it was possessed by an evil entity, I'd be like, yeah. that's a fucking piece of cloth. Why am I <coughs> scared of a rag coming at me? A that's literal a rag. That's a great premise for a fucking horror movie, a horror comedy. I mean, it's Like, it's a possessed to... doll, but, like, it's just fluffy and just it's just pissed off and can't figure out how to kill people. Like, it's always, it's, its efforts are always frustrated. Everyone thinks that it's like trying to uh, like love them and like, aw, I love you, Snuggle Bear. Like, it's really just trying to strangle them to death, but it, mm-hmm. like, so the doll's just fucking furious all the time. <laughs> Snuggle Bear, you always know exactly when to give me a hug. Yeah. <laughs> and like it's um, slow, so it thinks like, oh, he brought me a knife to help me cook. Like it's in the kitchen, but it can't move fast. Yeah. So it, oh. Um,. So not only that, though, Brandon, the name of the doll is very uncreative that they gave it. Like, half of Annabelle was already in the name of Raggedy Ann. Oh, you're right. Right? Like, one full syllable, practically. Raggedy Um, Annabelle. Yeah. So, regardless of its innocuous trappings, the gift was a birthday present for Donna, who, characteristically, has no last name, nor location which invalidates any form of fact checking that we could perform on the doll curious um mm-hmm. so donna lived in a tiny apartment with her um, fellow nursing student angie where's her apartment located oh that's a good question um i don't know oh 
uh, it we know that it's so we know a little bit about it because it's going to be covered in the future. Um, but uh, we don't know where it was located. We know some attributes about it, but we don't know where it was located. Also, Angie unsurprisingly has no last name either. Oh, because, nice. Yeah. Um. So Donna welcomed Raggedy Ann into her house as a bed decoration because that's what you do. Yeah. I mean, she was in her. If she's a nursing student and she's like she was about to graduate, so she's like early twenties, like twenty one, twenty two, somewhere in there. Right. Yeah. Roughly. Um, it's a little like, uh, yeah. So as all good haunted dolls do, the initial experience with the doll was small movements, right? Because like every haunted doll story starts with, did I put you there? Yeah. Were you in that pose? Why are you dabbing? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, namely, you know, like position changes. And if that's enough to point to a haunted object, Brandon, my King Poseidon, which took a header off of a shelf when one of the components, like, suddenly got weak and cracked. Yeah. If that is... If, if moving when you're not paying attention to them is the case, I've got a haunted-ass uh, Seacon team. That's all I have to say. Um, There's... Or a cat. Or a cat. Uh, eventually, however, these small movements progressed into larger ones, with the roommates finding the dolls in different rooms of the house than where they left it. Which, Brandon, uh, reminds me of the time that you bought a pack of My Little Pony cards. Yes. And there were two standees in that pack of My Little Pony cards. Uh-huh. And those standees would move across around my room every time you came over. Yeah, it was, it was a weird coincidence. Yeah, it was weird. I think they were haunted, Brandon. You, you, I'm not you, you sure. You should have probably smudged the room. Oh, I smudged the room all right. Oh, God. I smudged that room real good. It's farts. That's the joke. Oh, my office smells so bad. Like farts? Yeah, I'm like only going to assume it's farts. Because, like, you work you work in a place that's got a lot of people who are farters. Oh, probably. no, I meant the, the office I'm in right now. Oh, the one you're in right in the now? house. Yeah, oh, that makes sense. Too. I made a milkshake yesterday, but I didn't take oh, any, Brandon, any lactose pills. Brandon, you know you you know that you know what that does to you. I th- I thought the smell would like leave the room. I thought it, I thought it would last longer than like less long than a f- like forty eight hours, but I, I was wrong. You need to smudge that room, but like not smudge it because of ghosts. Smudge it because of fart demons. I need to steam clean this chair. Relatable. <laughs> my, just... The chair at my, the chair when I worked for IBM, I was like, this chair needs this. This chair is cursed. There's, you're kind of lucky that you that you totaled your old car because th- that back seat, man. Oh God, that back seat was ruined. Yeah, ruined. Right, it was that one. Yeah, no, it, no, it was... was it that one? Because because the one. one, the one where I almost got into a car accident was my Toyota. I think it was the Toyota. Yeah, but I didn't have the Toyota when I told it. it. The, I told uh, the, the Honda. The Toyota, that thing was a fart can. That was a, that was a can of farts. That is all the Toyota was. That was just a can of farts. <laughs> I have it nothing happens. else to say. It just happens. It was <clears throat> that Toyota was was a oh nightmare. Oh God, my Toyota right now! Now that you bring it up, and like the weather's starting to get a little bit warmer, and like when it warms up, it smells mm-hmm. become activated. Yeah, because because Toy- all Toyotas <clears throat> hold farts. That's Erica went to drive my car the other day, and like I hadn't driven it that day, and she came back in the house and was like, "Brandon, you have to do something about your car." <laughs> <laughs> go to go to the fucking. Uh, Go to go to Yankee Candle and get one of them like car scent thingies. There's, I'm I'm, just just, I'm, I'm getting a new new car next month in July. Do it do it for the others. Do, do it for it, the others. Do, do it for it. the next person who owns the car. I don't. Who's gonna buy a twelve year old Corolla that smells like farts? Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people. Who's going to buy a 12-year-old Corolla with no brakes? 
that needs a new exhaust system and electronics and two new O2 sensors that smells like people, farts. People who get sold it that they're not being told about all of that. That shit's for true. Mm-hmm. I can guarantee um, you they're not going to tell anyone about that exhaust system. Nope. Uh... So, the poses of the doll would vary. Sometimes it would be standing upright, other times cross legs and folded arms. The doll even pulled the classic haunted move of appearing in rooms that had been closed. So, like, the door was closed and, like, oh, the doll appeared in here somehow and I didn't accidentally leave it in here. But, so here's the thing. I want to, like, there's this part of me that wants to put my normal, like, debunky hat on. Yeah. But, like... This story is so clearly fake that it's not worth putting the debunky hat on. Like, yeah, sure, that happened, but, like, the story didn't happen. So, like... It's it's a fez, and at the end of the tassel is a, a magnifying glass. Gotcha. It's your debunky hat. It's my debunky hat. Um, yet, uh, Raggedy Ann was a learned doll, at least more than Robert. In addition to pulling off the old hot, haunted doll tango, as I like to call it, she could write. Ooh. Um, the roomies found several penciled notes on a parchment paper that Donna, for some reason, didn't keep in the home, although the jury is out on whether or not Angie did. Um, so I'm assuming it's like cooking parchment paper. Yeah. Right? Which is like super cheap, first of all. Right? So like saying that nobody has keeps it in the house is like kind of bullshit because it's like, yeah, but you could, like, walk to the corner store and pick it up. Like, you could go to the gas station and get fucking parchment paper. Right? So, like, I don't know. <clears throat> so, but, something I, I want to point out is that the original Raggedy Ann dolls, mm-hmm. not the one in the image, but the, like, the vintage ones, yeah. didn't have thumbs like that one does. They had no. little They had little bumps. <laughs> like, they're thumb, <laughs> thumb bumps. But it, it reminds me of. It wouldn't be posable like that. That uh, the one in the image. This one's just covered in fucking stains. What happened to it? Um, big cummies. Do you just say big cummies? Yeah, big cummies. It got big cummied on. Um, <laughs> just th- but sam- hot ropes. Yeah, a lot of ropes. I mean, look at look at the hair. Look at that hair. She's just asking for ropes. Oh, actually, talking about hot ropes, uh, heads up, up to, like, 70% off specific items on adamandeve.com. God damn it, Brandon. You can get yourself 25% off a clit sucker. Uh, the Super Sucker Pro 2. What about the Humbler? They don't do... I, I didn't explore if they had a Humbler. Okay. Um, so sample messages that this, uh, Annabelle would, well, we don't know her name yet. The Raggedy Ann would write were help us and help Lou. (laughs) Now, naturally, if the activity just ended here, the infamy of Raggedy Ann wouldn't become a recurring rogue in the Warner Brothers stable of characters. The shift in tone of the story, uh, however, occurs when Donna finds out that the doll had once again been moved in her absence. However... This time it had blood drops on the back of its hands and chest. <clears throat> raggedy Ann was on the raggedy something. There's, the raggedy rag. So the reference, I'm not actually, never mind. I'm not going to say it. I was going to bring up on the Mambo number five joke, but it's not worth it. No. Help, like help Lou Bega because he needs a little bit of Annabelle in his life. Oh, that's fine. Uh, it, it's it. the time I had to look up the lyrics the time passed I shouldn't have brought it uh, up no you shouldn't have you should have waited until we mentioned Lou again oh was he I didn't know he was coming back up he gets mentioned again he gets mentioned again oh. you could have you could have waited for it and it would have been perfect timing but you know what you fucked up you fucked up but it's I don't okay. fucked up it's okay we backtraced it um so interestingly, the blood that was on her hand, her chest, and her uh, hands was still liquid, which implies that that's fresh. Yeah, because because like blood dries super quick, relatively quickly. Yeah, yeah. Like like, I have blood spots on my like near my face on my put my my blanket because I have a body that hates me. Um, but like. Yeah, like, I've never... I don't think I've ever found a wet, sticky blood spot ever. 
So I unless have, like, but it's always been mine from a cut I didn't know I had until I f found it later. But like, was it on your body still? The blood? Yeah. Yeah, like I usually don't really until I'm like, oh, my pants have this weird blood spot on them. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's you're still bleeding actively, right? Oh no, it'll it'll be like, like I'll I'll like bump into a nail or something and not notice for like three hours. Brandon, is your is your blood clotting all right? You okay? Well, like yeah, it's it's fine. It's so here here's the for people who 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 are prone to injury. Yeah. What you learn is that if you get a cut or a puncture through an item of clothing, it never really heals right because it'll drag partially and then you'll like move your arm or something and then it'll pull the cloth off the wound and like reopen because it's like pulling a scab off again. So you keep uh, yeah, have this know, weird like half wet, half crusty like patch. I, I know. I'm still worried about your clotting factor. That's all. <laughs> The, well, just a little. We'll see. Are you walking the whole time? Are you moving around the whole time? Because like, yeah. although right. I might have to go on blood thinner soon, that'll be interesting. Because getting that's old like, sucks, and my blood pressure is always a little bit high. That's like the opposite of the fear that I had. I thought your blood was too thin, but I guess it's not. Um, I have the thickest, best blood. It's just so thick. Just so thick. It's got that creamy, creamy yum. Yeah, it's like uh, Hershey's chocolate syrup. Mm-hmm. Vampires love it. Yeah. But they can't have too much. They can't have too much. This, can a vampire get diabetes from drinking the blood of somebody that has high sugar? I mean, we can only assume, right? Like, there's nothing, there's nothing about vampires that say that they have increased... Not... Well, that's not true. We'll depends have to wait on the, it, for the, the It depends new on the version. Yeah. It depends on the version of the vampire, right? Because some vampires have increased regeneration speeds, but not all of them, right? Like, there's some that yeah. don't. I mean, shout so, out like, to what we do in the shadows. Tackle this next season, please. That would be interesting. It would absolutely be Matt Berry's character who gets the diabetes, though. Oh yes, oh. Without, without a doubt. Um, so, returning to the uh, Raggedy Ann or Annabelle, if you will, um, the pair called in a medium to conduct a séance to find answers about their new housemate. Um, and Brandon, at this point, I want to just like pause the story, even though I've been uh, the story's been on pause because we've been talking about blood. Um, but <laughs> I want to pause the story to talk about the Warrens a little bit. Okay. In cosmology. Um, do you know anything about the Warrens in terms of like their religious beliefs or their like s their spiritual beliefs? No, I mean presumably there's some kind of Christian, but I I don't know. So they're like hyper Catholic. Yeah, it sounds that's about par for the course. Like like super strict Catholic dogma was the thing, and if you did anything even remotely. Uh, not related to that. You were basically like, hey, demons, inhabit me. Yeah. Right? That was like their whole thing. Um, naturally, of course, Annabelle is just another example in their case against literally any other religion or spiritual belief uh, uh -huh. other than their specific blend of Catholicism. Because, um, like, this is a point in the story where things begin to take a turn for Donna and Angie, and that's because they contacted a medium, right? Okay. Um, so... As a result of the seance, the pair learns that the doll was inhabited by the spirit of Annabelle Higgins, a totally real person who I've ne who is not made up in the slightest. Um, Annabelle supposedly had been a young girl who lived on the pop property that currently housed their ap apartment complex. For some reason, the Warren's telling finds it important to note that the media called her life on the property as happy times. However, it doesn't uh, appear that they did the necessary research to identify whether or not the story was accurate or even verifiable. Although, um, given uh, like the way that they're going to twist this story, they'd mm -hmm. argue that no, Annabelle wasn't real. But still, 
The wars I'd would never do... twist any story, John. That's ridiculous. Yeah, no, they're very well known for their honesty. Um, so Annabelle Higgins was supposedly found dead uh, at age of seven. Age of seven. Age seven in the field near where she lived. Once again, easily verifiable because that would be like there would be a record. Even like yeah, there would be an obituary. Like, Seven, seven is old enough that you're like, all right, I guess we're going to have to record that this person died. Yeah. Right? Like, you're pushing. If it was like, if she was five, eh, who needs it? it like, I mean, she's yeah. five. That's like barely any time. Right? Like in the olden days. But seven, seven's like on the on the borderline. You're Are probably the 70s the olden days, John? Well, H- Annabelle died before the 70s. Oh, gotcha. And she died before the the apartment complex was built on the field. So, yeah. Um So, uh like like once again as I said, they do change their fin- Ed changes his final judgment of Annabelle. Um so from their perspective the fact checking might have been pointless, so like I can't knock them too much, but mm-hmm. I'm going to knock them anyways because it's an opportunity to knock the Warrens and I'll take every chance I get. <laughs> Do it. Knock him up. Um, so, resu- regardless, the results of the spiritual experience led Donna and Angie to believe that the spirit was peaceful looking f- and looking for love from the pair. The duo acquiesced, feeling pity for the ghost girl, permitting her to pros- possess the doll and stay with them. Now, at this point, if we're watching a, uh, a Conjuring movie, uh, the sinister music is going to start to play as they drive oh. back home. Right? Nice. Because, like, cause, like, you've just had this heartfelt moment, and now, like, it's like, you know, like like the dark music is coming because it's yeah, like, like the the, the, the visuals get darker as they like drive yeah. into the distance. Yeah, and like they're pulling in, and like you know, there's like like a, a really like aggressive like uh, minor key playing in some way or another. There's a swing set that needs to be oiled with a swing just blowing in the breeze. Yeah, and even though, like, there's been previous l- shots from that perspective, the swing shot was never there before, but now there's a swing shot there for some yeah. reason. Who knows? Um, naturally, as this music starts playing, uh, things wouldn't stay so pacific. Otherwise, why is Annabelle in Warren- the Warren's Occult Museum and deserving of her own f- spinach franchise? You remember Lou? The one you were going to make the Lou Bega joke about? Yeah, yeah, that Lou. Yeah, you could try making a Lou Bega joke in a few seconds. It's too late. Uh, I closed the tab already. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, so it turns out Lou, once again, no last name, was friends with both Donna and Angie and had been there on the day that the doll arrived and he believed it to be evil, warning Donna to get rid of the thing. Um, and while they didn't explicitly map out his relationship to the duo... I think he was, like, in an intimate relationship with one member of the pair, presumably Angie, um, because otherwise the next two stories don't make sense to me. He was more... In, it was phone sex, but the interesting thing was he only had could use one ear because the other one was deaf. Shout out to Lou Ferrigno! Woo! Oh, you got me. Got him! You did it. You worked a blue in. I got a Lou in there. Um, What about Louie Anderson? Can we get him in? There's... The demon flies through the gap in his teeth. <laughs> One night, Lou was woke from sleep in a panic and appears to have been afflicted with a bout of sleep paralysis. Oh. Lou appeared empty to his sleep-paralyzed vision until he turned his eyes to his feet where he saw Annabelle. Once again, I want to remind you, this is a Raggedy Ann doll. So, yeah. Brandon, just picture this. You're laying in bed. You got sleep paralysis. Uh-huh. You're looking around. You look down, and you see, like, a fucking Raggedy Ann doll staring at you. Hard as a rock. I figured diamond. you'd say that. You could cut diamond. Diamond? Yeah. Yeah. She better watch her you step. Th- those cummies will blast a hole right through her head. <laughs> um, so the dolls then said to have glid- glided up his leg slowly until it reached oh, his chest. Yes. But it uh, it skipped the it skipped the diamonds, apparently. Describe it slower. Ah uh, no. Let me no. get the fun sack out of my closet real quick. No, the fun sack. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna need to explain this to me. 
it what where does the fun sack go the fun sack goes in the closet when it's not in use but when it's in use where does the fun sack go Brandon? listen the fun sack goes wherever you want it to go does it yeah can you bring the fun sack to uh, a theme park or amusement park? I wouldn't recommend it. No? Why Why is that? The, the you said it can go where it wants to go. I, uh, I, um, I mean, you could. Uh, yeah. You get a lot of weird looks if you took anything out of the fun sack. Oh, okay, so the fun sack is a storage device. The fun sack is a storage device. Okay, the fun sack is not itself the fun thing. No. The fun in fun sack is referring to the implements within the fun sack. Yeah, the fun sack's a, a black cloth bag. Mm. Nondescript. Yeah, nondescript. Now, what kind of what kind of fabric are we dealing with? Are we dealing with like a cotton blend, or are we dealing with like? Are you literally looking at a fun sack uh, at a bag right now, Brandon? <laughs> Brandon. Uh-huh. Brandon. My my headphone cables aren't long enough. Is this know. is this is this not a f- like completely a joke? And is this oh, no. real? No, we own a fun sack. Oh god. I regret instantly prying into the fun <laughs> sack. Um So anywho, gets on a chest and somehow somehow Lou is strangled by a raggedy hand doll. To death? No, no, because he's, he's still telling the story, right? Oh, yep, yep. That makes yeah. sense. So, like, um, it was to the point of asphyxiation with him ultimately blacking out. The next yeah. morning... I, hell yeah? I don't know if there was consent here, though. I don't think I don't think he had a safe word with Annabelle. I mean, the, you don't need a safe word. It's over when you're done. So the next morning, Lou allegedly believed it not to be a dream. However, the writing at this point in the official account is super fucking confusing. And I'm not sure if this is implied to be a dream or if it's implied to be real, because they also talk about the fact that he's been having a recurring bad dream. And I don't know if this is the the bad dream that he's been having or if it's just something that happened in addition to it. It's like really not well written. Yeah. Um, and that's partially because the Warrens haven't shown up yet, so, like, they don't give a shit. Because um, they're honestly super narcissistic, in my opinion. Um, regardless, Lou would have had an additional encounter with Annabelle, this time alongside Angie. And while they were planning for a road trip, which, once again, is why I think they were in an intimate relationship, the pair okay. heard rustling room sounds from Donna's room. Naturally... Lou did the dumb thing all horror protagonists do. Well, not actually. No, not the protagonist. It's usually the person who gets killed first who does this. Uh, He went to the door and investigate, right? He waited for the rustling sound to stop, which is baffling to me. Like, why would you wait for the sound to stop before you open the door? Open the door while the sound is happening. Catch them in the act. Yeah, too spooky. They're not going to be like... But, like, if you open the door when the rustling sound stopped, you give them a chance to react. Oh, you know what? This reminds me of, like, a while ago, um, Eric and I went on a trip to, uh, like, a spa resort thing, just to, like, mm-hmm. get a break and, and, and you know, our, the in-law watched uh, Pika overnight, and we never thought to tell her that the cats like to open and close doors, <laughs> so she kept noticing that the door in the kitchen, like, would be closed and then would be open, like, whenever she'd go in, like, the door would be in a different position, until eventually Amazing. she saw the cat, like, pushing it. Amazing, but she was, I guess, like, like, what the hell is that? <laughs> trying to figure out how the door's moving. That's pretty good. I was about to ask if the fun sack was involved, but I don't want to know the answer. With the cats, no. The trip, but we'll move on. Um, oh, that one. Yeah, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. It stayed. Ho- it, it stayed. It stayed home this time. Okay. I don't like the implication of this time, but anywho. Uh, So he opened the door and turned the lights on to see no one but Annabelle in the corner of the room. As he approached the doll, uh, he felt as though someone was behind him, and then he felt a flash of pain across his chest. Allegedly, Lou's shirt was stained with blood, and he had seven claw marks across his chest. Three vertical, four horizontal. As is the case, um, 
The marks healed rapidly and were gone in two days. And once again, no photos, no evidence that this actually ever happened. You know, normal oh, stuff. Normal stuff. And they just washed the shirt, like right I away. I assume, probably. Man, um, let's see. They're bad at documentation. Yeah, I mean, for a, a group that's called the New England Sci- Society for Psychic Research, they're really bad at research. Like, really um, bad. Yeah. So, at this point, uh, if we're talking about a movie, like, the shot's going to change. It's going to be exterior of the Warren's house, and you're going to hear, like, a heroic music, right? Because that's what happens. Um, at, so, they enter the, the, the story as Donna now believes the doll is evil. Hilariously... In their write-up of the case, they show their bias towards Catholicism, like, really, really obviously. And I'm going to be quoting directly from the the, the Nesper report now for a okay. lot of this, because the way that it's fucking written is insane. So let me just take a quick drink of water, and then we'll... We'll get a reading. I hope you all enjoy that ASMR. Um, so after Lou's experiences, Donna felt it was time to seek real expert advice and contacted an Episcopal priest named Father Hegan. Father Hegan was a spirit, felt it was a spiritual matter and he needed to contact a higher authority in the church. So he contacted Father Cook who immediately contacted the Warrens. Now, the fact that they say real expert advice kind of tells yeah. you exactly their opinion on everything. It's pretty, pretty fucking clear. Right? Um, they really don't believe in non-Catholic belief systems. I mean, to be fair, I don't either, but I also don't really fully believe in Catholic belief systems either. So I'm a little bit of, I'm a little bit different. I'm an equal opportunity. I don't believe in it. They, they choose their, their, their battles that they, their things they believe in. Be interested. Well, they say it's an Episcopal priest. We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Um, because with... In Catholicism, and we'll see how it goes with like the demons. In that, priests are not allowed to perform an exorcism. It has to get like go through an approval, like a written approval process, and mm-hmm. like go through a chain, and then it has to get like come back down, and then they have to like get a bishop or somebody over to like mm-hmm. like it's mm-hmm. a whole thing. It's not just like call a priest and get an exorcism. Like it's yeah, no, it's a it's a thing. No. Yeah, yeah. The 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 rite of exorcism in Catholicism has like a lot of rules involved with it. It's not like it's not like the um the evangel the evangelist exorcists who do the like be gone demon thing, you know, yeah. like the the revivalists. It's a totally different thing. Um a lot that you can say about that. I don't really think I'm ever going to do I don't think I'll ever want to do an episode on exorcism for this because it like it'll probably make me too mad. <sighs> There's a lot in the. It's different for like every v- different version of like Catholicism and all that that there is, and then a lot yeah, of it's but, like abusive. Yeah, that's that's the problem. There, it would make me too mad, right? Because like, like, it's also it's also like anti anti like anti uh, a lot of things. They've literally yeah. tried to like exercise the the autism out of kids on the spectrum. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's been at least one child who's died because of that. There's been multiple t- child deaths because yeah. of that. Well, because of exorcisms, for sure. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so we're not going to talk about that on this podcast because uh, it too- would probably break me. Yeah. <laughs> too much. Too many sads. Uh, I not even sads. I just be fucking pissed the whole S- time. Angry. It's like. Yeah, it's like. The problem is it's like it, it reduces people's like actual experiences to something that it's is like pointless and like Yeah. It it, it ignores the fact that like people are people, right? And they're living through this life and you know what? I'm it, I'm it, starting to get on my soapbox. Removing the autonomy from people. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to get on my yeah. soapbox. I'm going to I'm going to just uh put that soapbox away cuz this particular soapbox is not going to be one I'm going to follow today. Um, Actually, you know what? That's the perfect segue to this week's sponsor, Dr. Squatch uh, Soap. We don't have a sponsor. Shout out Dr. Squatch. Uh, we'll pay us. That's No, they're not. They're not going to pay, pay us. Pay, pay have their, they emailed you? For uh, Bigfoot, they want Bigfoot. They're, they're doing Dr. Squatch X Extreme Restraints crossover soap for your butt. 
is what they're making. Soap for your butt. It spikes. Honestly, honestly, that'd be fucking cool. Butt soap, butt soap would be awesome. Butt soap. Butt soap that's made by Dr. Squatch and, uh, or Squatch Soap and, um, and Extreme Restraints would actually be something I might buy. Hell yeah. It'd probably be in the shape of a penis. A Sasquatch There's two penis. kinds. There's one that's for the butt and one that's just a ring. <clears throat> so you can clean the outer diameter of, you know, your bits. So the Warrens, uh, overestimated their abilities and their importance in the church because they do place themselves as like the person who immediately contact there is immediately contacted by father Cole, right? Like there's a very clear line that you can draw between the process by which they get involved in the case and their like own self of, uh, like their own sense of self inflated ego. Right. Yeah. Um, more importantly, Albert Brandon, I don't actually think any of the clergy in the story actually exists. It's possible. Like, yeah, I don't think so. But I didn't do a whole lot of research, so if they exist, someone tell me. But I didn't find them. Um, so the Warrens jump into the story, and immediately... And when I say immediately, friend, I mean fucking immediately start talking about their form of demonology. And because um, if you're not familiar with it, like that was like what Ed considered himself. He considered himself a demonologist. Whereas huh. um, Lorraine was the one who had um, psychic powers or whatever, right? So yeah. um, instead of summarizing the investigation, Brandon, I'm just going to like read the two paragraphs that Nesper wrote about it. So Ed and, La- Rela- Ed and Lorraine Warren immediately took interest in the case and contacted Donna concerning the doll. The Warrens, after speaking with Donna, Angie, and Lou, came to an immediate conclusion that the doll itself was not in fact possessed, but manipulated by an inhuman presence. Spirits do not possess inanimate objects like houses or toys. They possess people, which is a line that I'm pretty sure John Dies at the end uses. Because they say they don't oh. they don't haunt they don't haunt houses, they haunt minds, is what he says. In uh, the first book. Huh. Um, yeah. Which is way cooler when they say it and John dies at the end. Here, it sounds stupid. But that's yeah. because, like, um, I know that they're assholes. Also, um, try and keep this in your head. Because there's going to be a portion of the story that makes you question what the fuck they're talking about. Because um, they immediately diverge from this opinion in this, like, particular vision of cosmology. Um, Oh, good. Yeah. So, actually, they they do it immediately after that sentence. An inhuman spirit can attach itself to a place or an object, and this is what occurred in Annabelle's case. What is the fucking difference between possession and attachment? Mm. Could you please, in, like, a sentence, explain to me the difference between those two? Because as far as I'm concerned, they mean the same thing. Possession and attachment? Um, yeah. Possession, maybe, like, implicitly is, like, penetration. Like, it's in the thing of which it's controlling. Mm-hmm. And then attachment, maybe it's just, like, it's not, f- like, f- air quotes physically within the object or person, but, like, around them controlling the object or person. I guess, but, like, functionally, is there any real difference? No. No, I, yeah. I would say there's a functional difference. Like, they're pretty much the same thing for what it matters. Uh, whatever. Um, so the spirit, this spirit manipulated the doll and created the illusion of being alive in order to get recognition. Truly, the spirit was not looking to stay attached to the doll. It was looking to possess a human host. Bah, bah. Bah, bah. Bah, bah. The, the spirit wants to masturbate for the first time. Hey, it might. That might be just all it wants, and then it'll leave. You don't know. Like, it can't make the doll do it. It needs a real human. Mm-hmm. Oh, it tried, but it didn't work. No sensation. It's fabric. No sensation. Yeah, it's it's just... You need the nerve endings. You need them. Um, Gotta have them. So the spirit in this case... Uh, in, in Or in this case, an inhuman demonic spirit was Ooh. essentially in the infestation stage of the phenomena. It first began moving the doll around the apartment by means of teleportation... To arouse the occupant's curiosity in hopes that it would give them give it recognition. 
Then, particularly, pr- predictably, the mistake of bringing a medium into the apartment. Once again, they they immediately they actually call it out as a mistake um, to communicate with it because, like, they're the type of people who think that anything that you do is like asking to get possessed, right? Um, and uh, the inhuman spirit, spirit now able to communicate through the medi- medium preyed on the girl's emotional vulnerabilities by pretending to be a rather harmless lost young girl with which during the seance was allowed permission from Donna to haunt the apartment insofar as demonic is a negative spirit it then set about causing patently negative phenomena to occur it aroused fear through weird movements of the doll it brought them about the materialization of disturbing handwritten notes, which I want to point out um, the handwritten notes were said to be occurring before the medium appeared. So like their own telling is like shitty. Yeah. Like, their timeline of events is very. Poor. Since when does it teleport? That's a new little thing. Yeah. I mean, it could just be moving around the house, but whatever. Uh, I mean, teleportation is like, why did you jump to teleportation? Like, yeah. you could have just opened the door and closed the door. If it's manipulating the doll, it can probably manipulate doors. Yeah, and not just, like, bamf around. And why, don't say yeah. teleport unless you, like, witness a bamfing. Yeah, you need to see the bamf. You need to hear yeah. it, too. If That's you don't right. hear it, it doesn't matter. Um, I just want to be so clear. Symbol- <clears throat> Excuse me, because I know I've made a reference to it before. I'm making a Nightcrawler reference. If no, if no one's catching on why I say bamf, it's a Nightcrawler reference. <clears throat> Because in the comics, it says Bamf when he teleports. Uh, Nightcrawler was a Catholic, too. Like, he had, like, Catholic mythology he built was. into his whole thing. Yeah. He was, um... I want to say he was, like, Mephisopheles' kid. Or, no, he was Mystique's kid with someone else, right? I don't recall really his origin. Time. I think Mystique is his, his his mother, but I could be wrong. Um, That's why he's blue. So, yeah, pretty much. Uh, the symbolic drops of blood on the doll, and ultimately it even attacked Lou, leaving behind the symbolic mark of the beast. Now, I want to take a second here. The mark of the beast? It had seven claws. Seven is historically more associated with good. God yeah. and good than it is with the devil. So I'm their, in, their internal logic is weird and doesn't function, but whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, Have you ever noticed so next... that, like, good s- things symbols are, like, prime numbers and bad things symbols are not? It's it's kind of a shame because uh, uh, non-prime number, even numbers are way better than prime numbers, in my opinion. See, I'm a fan of prime numbers, mm. but because of reasons. I like I like numbers with, like, nice divisions, right? Um, I like... I like numbers that are multiples of primes quite a bit, actually. 21 is, is a good number. See, it's three I, sevens. See, I like prime numbers because if you build things and stick to prime numbers with your moving parts, then you avoid, like, resonance and, like, blade pe- pass frequencies. Like, things are qui- oh. quieter if you make them using multiple, uh, using things that are prime numbers and you don't repeat those numbers. I didn't know that. And the now I know. Fun facts from your Snapple Cat. I feel like that's too involved for a Snapple Cat. That is far too involved for a Snapple Cat. Um, so the next stage of the infestation phenomena would have been complete human possession. Had these experiences lasted another two or three more weeks, the spirit would have completely possessed, if not harmed or killed, one or all of the occupants in the house. Oh, good. Yeah. So, after reaching this conclusion, they asked the dubiously extant uh, Father Cook to cleanse the apartment. Weirdly, the story on the Nesper site takes this moment to directly quote Ed Warren in the write-up. And I mean directly quote. It has, like, parentheses Ed Warren after this quote. And when I saw it, I was just like, what are they doing? Where is this quote coming from? Because I didn't see see a references list at the end. There was no... There was no... There was no... um, bibliography so like we have no idea to, where to pull this from um the episcopal blessing of the home is a wordy seven page document that is distinctly positive in nature rather than specifically expelling evil entities from the dwelling the emphasis is instead on directed towards filling the home with the power and posit- of the positive and of god now the warns wouldn't do this but there is 
you could make an awesome movie about like sumo wrestlers cleansing a, a, a building of spirits, right? Because mm -hmm. so why they throw salt in the ring before every match is like to cleanse the ring. But before yeah. the start of every tournament, if you watch if you watch it live, like a live stream, <clears throat> the the Yokozuna, like the head guy comes out and he does like this whole, you know, ritual thing. Mm. And it's he's driving the bad spirits out of the arena and the chat just gets filled with people to write like Get fucked, demons! Get the fuck out of here! Like just people like yelling, like, like spirits get fucked as he like does his like actual like spiritual routine, and it's the funniest shit you'll ever see. So they, they I should, kind of love that. They should just make a movie of like sumo wrestlers like fighting spirits out of a house, because that's kind of what they're doing. Whoa! Wait a second. That's probably a movie. That's sumo maybe. wrestler ghost movie. <clears throat> Let's see. The Good. Happiness of the Katakuris is a Japanese musical comedy horror directed by Takashi Miike, uh, loosely based on the South Korean film The Su The Quiet Family. This is the first hit that I got. That doesn't look like a. The Katakuris are Katakuris are a four generation family of failures. <laughs> uh. uh the second guess is sumo wrestler also dies of a heart attack. Okay, never mind. That's not. That's not sumo wrestlers fighting ghosts. Sumo Joe? No, that seems wrong. Chikara. What's this? Chikara. I don't know why sumo pin wrestler's came son. Up. Yeah, they don't even pin in sumo wrestling. That time a sumo wrestler had surgery to make his head taller. I uh, what? A Why? sumo wrestler's tail. I I I. There's got to be something that's made about that, but it just it's got to be a thing, right? Because it has to exist. He literally like like that's what they do like before it's every, like like the match. It, it's like pretty much already written itself. You don't even need to write anything. Like it's yeah. there, right? Ah, whatever. So. Now, Brandon, um, sumo wrestlers fighting ghosts aside, uh, because that's a way cooler way of dealing with spirits than the way the Warrens yeah. do it. Um, I am terribly confused about Annabelle's story once we leave Donna and Angie's apartment. So, as I said before, they can't possess dolls. However, they believe that the stall, the doll may still house the spirit, so they take it with them when they leave Donna and Angie's apartment. Which, once again... Incons inconsistencies are frustrating to me. Um, so it's like, Ed are they dif different? Is it... <laughs> they're confusing me because is it... Is being a vessel to a spirit different than being possessed by a spirit? And if it is, are I, they implying it can't get out of the doll? I think they're saying that it is different. I don't know if they're saying that it can't get out of the doll. Because, like, the thing is, if it's, it has an... I, I, Brandon, I don't get it. That's the problem. Okay. It doesn't make sense, right? Like, they don't explain the logic whatsoever. So, but I mean, there probably isn't any, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so also, Ed didn't even take the interstate, apparently, because he was afraid that they would somehow have an accident because of the, the demon. Okay. Right? Uh, because apparently it was still inhabited by the demon, as this colorful line indicates. And I'm going to read, once again, a quote from the Nesper uh, document. His suspicions were all correct in no time. The Warrens felt themselves as a, as a the object of a vis vicious hatred. And that is directly... The, I cold, pulled this directly. I did not yeah. type that out. It's as a the object. Um, then, at each dangerous curve, the car swerved and stalled with every corner, causing the power ceiling and brakes to fail. Oh, that sounds Repeatedly, like they're driving a Tesla. Pretty much. Repeatedly, the car verged on collision. Ed reached into the back seat of the uh, of, into his black bag and took out a vial of holy water and doused the doll, making the sign of the cross over it. The disturbances stopped immediately, and the Warrens arrived safely home. So, um, yeah, it they might have been driving a Tesla in 1970, but since you know it's 1970, uh, I think it's more that Ed is a shitty driver and he's bad at taking care of. His I mean, car. it's the 70s. He could have been drunk. Like, he you could have been just drunk, drunk driving in the 70s. 
Yeah, I mean, in the 70s, that was before, like, alcohol, like, beer was, con- like, drinking beer, you, you weren't considered an alcoholic if you drank beer. Yeah. Like, they had to make ads to tell people, no, you're an alcoholic. Yeah, they would like, they, that's so funny that that happened, too. Like, like, I, it, like I don't know, it's, it's not funny, because it's super depressing, but, like, yeah, they needed to make ads to tell people that they were alcoholics because yeah. uh, um anywho once they were in the home of the warrens the doll continued to pull the same old tricks jumping between rooms and even levitating cool which it had never done um incidentally annabelle was said to have a penchant for causing automotive accidents in one case a priest had his brakes fail entering a busy intersection which Yes, that's scary, but, like, if you're entering a busy intersection and your brakes fail, just keep driving and take your foot off the gas. Yeah. Right? Like, because, like, the number of times I drive through an intersection I ne- my feet never touch the brake is frequent, actually. Um, I might even argue it happens more often than I hit the brake while going through an intersection. Yeah, I try to use the brake as little as possible. That's also because I don't have brakes, really, right now. Yeah, that's true. Um, so after, and, and these, this brake failure happened after he called Annabelle just a Raggedy Ann doll. Jeez. Do they only buy Ford Pintos? <laughs> what was it? It had a magnesium, like, engine block, right? Is that the, <coughs> the magnesium, <coughs> you want to say? Excuse me. Uh, that's the one where the fuel tank was mounted um, almost against the rear bumper and had a bolt directly like facing it so if you got rear-ended it would just puncture your fuel tank yeah no i mean but like then it also like burnt real good i don't know if it was magnesium if it had a magnesium knot or block or not um i don't know why you would make anything combustible make anything Uh, magnesium near something combustible oh it was a wait was it aluminum no or pinto engine and for people wondering why we're talking about magnesium, it's because when magnesium burns, it creates, it releases oxygen molecules, so you can actually like burn magnesium underwater. So you like it, it burn real good. Let me see. One second. One second. I, this this is important because I remember hearing some. Like I know that the the design was bad. Like it was just a bad design. But there was like, I thought that there was like an even worse component to the design. Maybe. Um, I mean, like, post office trucks just burst into flames because the uh, fluid for, I want to say the windshield wipers, is stored directly above the electronics for the vehicle. So if there's ever a leak in that tank, it causes a short, and that's why, like, there is just a known quantity of mail trucks that burst into flames each year. I hate it. Um... Oh, yeah, this was one of those things where they, like, I think they knew about it, and, like, they did a cost-benefit analysis, and they they were like, oh, it's it's cheaper to pay people for the, like, injuries and the loss of life than it is to actually fix it. So it might actually be a Tesla. (laughs) Pretty much. Uh... Continue tort liability cross engines, not just Ford vehicles. They think that was a specifically a thing that Ford did do. Yeah, <clears throat> they did. They did like an analysis that like resulted yeah. in them not fixing it. Anywho, um, returning to this because there's another person who gets in an accident. Uh, there was a young man who had antagonized Annabelle by asking her to scratch him while visiting the occult museum. Ed is said to have kicked the individual out with his girlfriend. Um, Get the fuck out of here! Yeah, he's like, you better leave, boy, I think is what he said. Something like that. Um, On their return trip, the man's motorcycle, uh, on the man's motorcycle, because I can't read, uh, they were laughing about the doll, and he lost control of the bike. The man was instantly killed, and the girlfriend was hospitalized for more than a year. Um, Personally speaking, if this happened, which I highly doubt it did, um, I side with what the girlfriend said, which where they said that they were simply laughing at the ludicrousness uh, of being afraid of a Raggedy Ann doll. Yeah. And I legitimately believe with that because that would be more likely than actually a curse because I would probably be laughing my ass off too. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so personally, though, uh, just to kind of like talk about what what Annabelle's origins are, um, I agree with the thesis proposed by Joseph Laycock in his two, 2014 article, "The Paranormal is a Pop Culture Pipeline." Uh, he indicates that the Annabelle story is likely a cultural pastiche, pulling from stories such as Robert the Doll, last week's last time. I covered an episode's episode, um, yeah. and even referencing a Twilight Zone episode called The Living Doll. And now, Brandon, have you ever seen the episode The Living Doll? I have not, no. So basically, the plot of the, the story is a little girl gets a doll. The doll can talk. Right? Uh-huh. Um, and the little girl's in a position that's not great because, like, there's an abusive family member, and, like, you know, it's all sorts of, like, not good stuff, you know? Yeah. Pretty, pretty like bog standard abuse story, all that stuff. Like you know, it's yeah. it's not fun. Nobody, nobody's winning here. Um, but what ends up happening is uh, the doll like kills the father or the father in law or whatever yeah. because they were harming the little girl, and then the the doll like threatens the mother, basically like don't fuck with this kid, right? Uh-huh. Um, so the plot line's kind of similar because like there is some elements of it that are like you know like the living doll, um, the the haunting, the paranormal components, all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, but also the mother in the uh-huh. story named Annabelle. Oh, okay. That's not on the nose. Yeah. And it came out like a handful of years before the Annabelle story supposedly happened. The, uh, so the, the yeah. interesting thing about um, Joseph Laycock is that his, so if you go back a few years, his, his name was originally, uh, what was it Joseph Livingston? And he got Laycock. It was actually like Wait, a nom de plume. Is this but like he got that in college? Wait, this is real? No, it's a it's a it's a dick joke, John. It's a dick joke. Because his name is Laycock. Oh, okay. So it's like uh, his name's not really Laycock. He just got that in college. <sighs> Bazinga! Uh, got him. Uh, all right. Well, we're almost done. So whatever. Annabelle now resides in the Warren's Occult Museum in Monroe, Connecticut, which is not terribly far away from us, I don't think. No, let's, let's uh, see how long. Let's see how long it takes for me to to drive to like how long it would take for me to drive to see Annabelle right now, and then make fun of it, and then drive back. Uh, oh, you know what's what's the name of the Warren's Occult Museum? I'm just gonna. Or... Oh, they're like outside of Newton. That's like outside of Newton. That's like really not far. Yeah, it's like halfway to, to New Haven, which is like maybe hour and a half from where we are. Well, where I am. So I could probably get there pretty quick. I could get there feast. Oh, wait, it's past. It's past. Is it past Hartford? And never mind, it's pretty far. This is wonderful, wonderful uh, content. Listen Sorry, to folks. us, Google. It do, is. Do, 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 do. Ba, 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 if we take the route with tolls, an hour and 35 minutes from my house. Yeah, so it's like closer to an hour from my house. Not bad. Not bad at all. Here you go you there should now. take your uh, spirit box over there. Yeah, I should. Um, it wouldn't be the first time it's gotten used there because the the like I said before the BuzzFeed Unsolved guys used it there. Um, oh, the same one? No, nah, yeah, probably because that's like the one, right? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, the yeah, famous yeah. one. Because it was it's the one made by the Ghost Adventures guy. Yeah. Like, if my understanding is correct, and like I'm going to be doing, I'm working on developing a like series around. ITC, which is intertrans communication or something, which is like a bullshit thing about talking about ghosts. So I'm yeah. working on like a larger story about that. I don't know if it's going to be an episode or it's like own standalone thing, but I'm uh, like part of the reason why I wanted to get the spirit box was because I wanted to work on a story along those lines. Um, yeah. And I'm not playing the spirit box on this, this, this podcast because spirit boxes uh, are super grating to listen to. Um, yeah, and I don't you really could, want to inflict that on people. You could play one, and then I'll just have to go through and edit out like the grading bits, or like dip the so peaks down be, when it makes screeches. It would basically, 
it would basically be silent because it's all grating. Yeah. Um, but regardless, Annabelle sits today in a derpy case with a glass window. Um, and for some reason, and I really don't understand this, uh, it wasn't always this case. It has a devil tarot card on the door. Yeah, she's the big version of Raggedy Ann, too, by the way. Not the little one, the yeah. big one. Yeah, she's the big one. She's a big girl. What's um, creepier is the doll to her right. How do I make this bigger? Yes, the doll to her right is way creepier. Like, it's by, like, by a, like a, 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 a magnitude. Yes, it's it's like a faceless, like... It's a faceless doll, with, doll, like, hanging from a noose. And it's got, like, canvas skin with, like, a beige dress. Yeah, inside it's, of, like, it's, a bell display case. Yes, it's way scarier than Annabelle ever was. Um, So, yeah, it, it's... it's The doll... It Like, Annabelle doesn't even look all that intimidating. Like, it's not even that scary of an iteration of Annabelle, of a Raggedy Ann. It's just, like... I'm stuffed in here for some reason. I don't know. Um, on the glass, it says, Warning, positively do not open. Um, and for some reason, I think the open part has been covered. Because like, if you scroll down, Brandon, you'll see the uh, older one. Oh. Um, and the open is still there. <clears throat> they added a wood frame like a, to the face of the case. And that's what it looks like. didn't move the warning sign up so you could read it more after adding the frame to the case which is hilarious and also i like the fact that they like used calligraphy for the warning right because they they drew the w and the r and the i and the yeah d- like everything is written in a different style than the rest of it it's um, it's bad and also i it doesn't appear they actually used a calligraphy pen no i think they just drew it that way yeah i think you're right and um, why just underline the gerund in warning? Like that's a good question. Only underlined I and G. Yeah, that's 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 a good question. I have no idea why they would do that. Um, honestly, though, the the Annabelle from the movies is way creepier because it's a porcelain doll, and that's way fucking creepy. Like so much right? creepier. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a way creepier thing. Like they did they did right in the movies. Um. Additionally, the provenance of the doll in fiction is, like, completely different. Like, and when I say completely different, I mean, like, not even remotely comparable to the original story. Um, yeah. So, like, obviously, if you've seen those films or you intend to see those films, it's a complete fabrication. Uh, yeah. Personally, however, um, despite, I like, I actually enjoyed The Conjuring, the first film. Um I have decided to completely abstain from watching any more films in the Conjuring universe. And um, because, for my my opinion, uh, the film The Devil Made Me Do It is problematic in... Uh, I, I use the term cultural malfeasance to describe Ooh, it. Ooh, fun. Uh, because it implies the, san- the satanic panic had literally any basis in, like, reasonableness because it, a, a a demon is literally responsible in the movie so huh. it like implies that like oh this case in the satanic panic in general wasn't so like it wasn't so whatever it wasn't like super fear mongering and it wasn't like you know a part of the reason why our world is our why america's in the shithole today yeah but it has you know, nothing to do with hyper hyper christianity and mccarthyism just like driving the uh, i don't know yeah, I mean, you know, nothing, nothing related to that. It's um, completely unrelated. But yeah, Annabelle's story. Annabelle's dumb. <laughs> you feel like in closing, Annabelle, get that bitch out of here. She dumb. It's just a dumb story. Like, it, it's, it's, it's got some good ghost story elements, and it's basically, but that's that's because it's like basically cribbing. Uh, ghost story notes from like every other ghost story that existed before it. Yeah. Right? Like there's nothing unique about the story of Annabelle. It's just it's just all the same bullshit just like wrapped around a a Raggedy Ann doll. Yeah, just repackaging. Yeah. It's a paint variant. Um, It is. uh, It's a different colorway. Oh, that reminds me. There's there's new Glyos figures that got released recently. Oh. The the podcast is over, by the way. So if you want to leave, you can leave. 
I'm I'm now I've now <laughs> entered the part of I've now entered the part of the the podcast where I'm googling action figures. So that means we're done. Just just to let everyone know. Cuz I'm looking at action figures now. Oh man, they sold some out from the last time I looked. Damn, Glyo sells so quick. I like this Phaos, but it's like a clear a clear plastic thing, and I like that a lot, but um I already have one and I don't feel like spending sixteen dollars on another one. Fair. I would if I had money, but I don't. To money be don't. Anywho, um Ooh, that head's cool. <laughs> <laughs> So if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to check out our website, CryptopediaCast.com, our Instagram, at CryptopediaCast, where I actually posted the pictures of the spirit box. Nice. Um, our Twitter, at CryptopediaCast. SoundCloud, we don't use. I don't know why I even keep that in there anymore. Let's just delete that. We never uploaded anything to it anyways. Um, our email address is CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. Um, our Patreon and Brandon, would you like to thank our Jackalope level supporters? Who yes. Who are the people who I unfortunately use their money to buy a spirit box? That's, yeah, special thank you to our Jackalopes. Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Linwood Sharp, Matthew Smith, Bushcraft Kelso, and Will Smith. Wiki Wiki. Um, ba we have a face. Dang, dang, diggy, diggy. But that's not. That's, that's, kid, a, that's, that's Kid Rock. That's Kid Rock, yeah. Um, we have a Facebook group. I don't pay attention to it anymore because I try to. I try not to pay as much attention to Facebook in general. Um, yeah, that's just all there is to it. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. Uh, word of mouth is fun. People joining the Discord is fun. All that good stuff, which I actually don't think I call out here. We have a Discord as well. Yeah, join yeah, our it's Discord. It's in the show notes. Um, yeah, weird shit happens in there. Fun. Lots there was, of weirdness. I think there was at least four conversations about titty. There was a lot week. of titty talk going on in there. There was a lot of titty talk this week. And not the titty mum um, from episode whatever. Yeah, no. I'm surprised the titty mum didn't show up. In you know, I wanted to, but it, when I was reading that thread, it was like late at night and I had the baby and I was like, eh. yeah, it was, it's too, it was more effort than I had stored within my body. At that, that's fair. That moment, babies do that. They take all the effort out of your body <clears throat> because Indeed, they require they effort. They're va- um, babies are just vampires that suck energy and formula. So, so they're psychic vampires, like the they guy are. from In the Shadows, except with more more poop. I don't know. We don't see him poop, but he might be pooping a lot. He might be pooping in people's cups. You don't know that. He might be. Anywho, um. But yeah, so monster requests or stories, send them in, all that good stuff. Yeah, or if you got any weird shit, so, so just send in suggestions. You know, do it. Um, you can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Uh, where oh. I just posted a retweeted. Someone took a picture of the exact moment that a lion nutted. So if you want to see that, Ooh. a lion. Wait. What's a lion? I think even Robert Evans retweeted it. Like the animal. Oh, a lion. Yeah. A lion. Like the animal lion. One sec. Let me let me let me let me pull up your let, Let's Twitter. let's let's let's, let's pull up Twitter. Let's, let's pull get up Twitter. get a a picture of this. Oh yeah, it is literally a lion nutting. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. I like how the 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 lioness is just like laying on the ground like what the fuck just happened they're doing it missionary like lions who would have thought lion style is missionary and then they he just nuts it's so good how do they I go have my sex tweets? 20 to 40 times in a single day like fuck yes <laughs> if a male is tired and can't take it anymore she bites his testicles demanding that he continue mating how do I feel the like- lion's, the lion's face when his testicles are getting bitten is probably the like the single saddest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh yeah, oh he's so sad. 
I'm taking copy I'm, I'm image. Screenshotting that part explicitly. I'm gonna put these in the Discord later. <laughs> and this is gonna get saved to my phone. <laughs> And it's on my phone. Uh, anywho, on Instagram, I'm at Mew2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at criticpdcast.com. If you like our art, you could find uh, Tom on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs> I almost said I'm Brandon. <coughs> oh. And that's why I had to pause. You could've. So as we're doing that, you know that little bridge at Mohonk that like you yeah. drive under and slow? A truck just took that out. Oh. So that road's also closed because there's just a bridge on it now. <laughs>